Hey everyone, there's that old joke about what's black and white and red all over, to which the answer is either a newspaper or the corporate balance sheet of a newspaper in the digital age. Nonetheless, the leaves are starting to turn red, and so are a lot of stock markets this week, with the FTSE 100 dropping below 7,000 points. Not to be mistaken for a dropping 7,000 pints, which is what Peter O'Toole and Rolliver Reed used to call a quote fun weekend. Share prices, they've been going up for the past 10 years though, and the last time we had a market crash, Prince William had a full head of hair. Netflix was that company that physically posted DVDs to you in the post. Stock market losses in the past week have been attributed to many things. The US trade war with China, Brexit uncertainty, US midterm uncertainty, and not to mention the reptilian overlords that David Icke likes to write about in his conspiracy books. You know, I've always thought if he were correct and the Queen were secretly a reptile, then the bedrooms at Buckingham Palace would have a lot more UV strip lighting in them. Anyway, back to the economy. What is certain is that the central banks have allowed an asset bubble to grow well beyond anything that can be controlled sensibly. And at this point, the only question is whether there will be a huge crash in defaults when the investors realise that rates are rising and the game is up, or whether inflation will kick in with regular savers bailing out the markets and bondholders by stealth. You know, I was going to make an analogy about the stock market being a bit like the bus at the end of the Italian job, except at least in the Italian job there was a big load of gold to help them out, and the Italians in that film still had their own currency, rather than being held in bondage by the political forces at the ECB. What is also true, though, is that whatever happens, Theresa May and President Trump will be given 100% of the blame. Or to be more specific, Trump will be given 40%, Theresa 40%, and Brexit 30%. And the fact that those add up to well over 100% may not be entirely surprising, given the academic pedigree of the armchair economists that will be invited to provide punditry to the masses. You know, the sort of people that need to give you change when you offer them a penny for their thoughts. Anyway, see you next week. If you like this, click subscribe.